Hello everyone, this is Tim, and this is going to be a very late video response to Matt Click of A Fistful of Dice. And he did a video a while back called When Free Will Becomes Chaos. And <laughs> as I've said a time or two in the past, I tend to be a very chaotic player. I've talked in the past about how I think I do this because I GM a lot and I get that sort of, I don't know, sort of crazy uh, <laughs> kid with too much sugar sort of feeling when I'm a player. Uh, sort of like, you know, been hanging out at home all day and mom let me run out the back door and all the rules and regulations and things are just out the window. And, uh, you know, and I, I understand that's a, that's a bad thing a lot of times that, you know, you should have more control over your actions and choices. And, you know, this is something that I've worked at for a while. And I realized that to become a good player, you need to practice. You need to play. Yes, there is some overlap between being a GM and a player. But in my experience, you really have to do both. You have to be on both sides of the GM screen to have the whole picture, to keep all of your skills sharp and focused and you know this is something I've done over the years. Just tried to try to play more, try to <laughs> restrain some of these chaotic tendencies. At least in the games where the GMs aren't prepared for that. A lot of times I'll be in games and I'll be more restrained, and the GM will sort of give me the you know what's going on. You're not playing like you normally do. You know I, I need that. You know so some GMs actually need that chaotic fuel. They need things to happen that have consequences. And I love when GMs have consequences to this, you know, bunch of crazy shit that I do sometimes in character. You know, there should be consequences. It's almost like they're afraid they're going to upset me for having consequences to the things my characters do. And, you know, I've learned to, to tell them right off the bat, you know, if I'm being too obnoxious, just let me know. You know, I'll give you the smack Tim in the in the face bat, you know, uh, when we start out, just, you know, so you know, don't be afraid to, you tell me, hey, knock your shit off, so, but there, like I said, there's other GMs that I think are like me, that really love those moments, they love that chaos, it's like throwing gas on a fire, it's just, some of the things that happen are just so unpredictable, so improbable, but they're awesome. I love to be surprised. So, you know, it's something that I've talked about before and I war with. You know, I don't want to be, you know, a derailing player. I don't want to be a terrible player. You know, some of these things that I do are probably in someone's list of, you know, that's a bad player. And, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things I've just learned about myself. And I just... Tell people up front, this is how I tend to be. I really enjoy freedom, you know, possibly to the point of it being damaging to a campaign if I don't watch myself, if I'm not careful. You know, these sorts of things. I think there's a few more points I gotta hit before the end of the video. Hold on. Matt had made a point about alignment, and that's another thing I try to stay away from, but just because your alignment is chaotic or evil doesn't mean there won't be repercussions, there won't be consequences. You know, you could be the most evil, cold-hearted, you know, black-souled son of a bitch, but if you sacrifice a bunch of kids in town, the townsfolk are going to come and kill you. At least that's what they're going to try to do. So you really shouldn't be upset. Well, I'm evil. Well they're pissed off. <laughs> That's going to be the reaction to the, you know, the shitty thing that you've done to the the people that they've raised from a you know, a little little kid, you know, the the sheriff, the soldiers, the the guardians or whatever the case is in that situation aren't going to just let you slide. They're going to make you pay or at least try to. So, as a GM, I, I love when chaos happens. I love when the shit hits the fan. As long as everyone is okay for that. 
again, I think this comes down to play style where, you know, I really need to learn how, how the GM runs things. Because if, you know, if you would put me with a brand new GM, I would want to tell myself to hold back, but I have a feeling my tendencies would get the better of me. <laughs> um, as a GM, I try to roll with the punches and, you know, I like very proactive, uh, chaotic players, especially in like a sandbox campaign, something that's non-linear. Uh, so I, I guess I play the way I do because I like when players do that. So I don't know if I'm just just showing the world what I, I, I enjoy when I'm in their position. But I have to understand that not every GM is like me. Not every GM is going to appreciate that. You know, especially if they have a very uh, more linear, uh, scripted sort of thing. Uh, important NPCs, they don't want them to die off too quick. Uh, I think I did some of that in Zig Copacetic's Song of Ice and Fire games. But at the same time, I think what we did fit the sort of style of Westeros, where it's it's deadly and dangerous and... There's no script immunity for any of the characters, including ourselves. You know, in one of those games, I died. So, so that was great. You know. So if I'm ever in your game, <laughs> and I do some crazy shit, you know, let the consequences of the world haunt me down dark alley and take care of me, if that's what makes sense for that that world, that setting. So yeah, chaos. Me and me and chaos are good friends, but. Sometimes I need to put that uh, that little <laughs> little imp on a chain and pull him in a little bit. Yeah, I guess that's about it. <laughs>